All right, today we're going to be rebuilding a fuser section for uh, the e Studio Toshiba e Studio 3505. Um, this fuser section will be the same for all of the O5s, uh, and it will be almost identical. I don't see much of a change at all in the 15 series. So if you have a 2515. 3015, 3515, 4515, 5015, that will this will apply as well. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out, pull the right side door down. Then there's going to be a lever on each side, one right there. And then there's going to be one over here. And then this unit will come right out. Alright. And then we're going to set it right there. And it'll come in a box like that. It'll come with um, a heat sleeve, wick, a stick, some pads, some fuser claws, a lower fuser roller. Um, so I'm going to go through this pretty quick as far as... Uh, you know, when I take a screwdriver to this, uh, oh, and by the way, I will leave a link for this screwdriver. I've been uh, working on copy machines for a long, long time, and I can tell you, this is the best screwdriver I've ever used. Um, it's got uh, two speeds, forward and reverse. It's got plenty of torque. It's got a torque limiter. It's got a flashlight. It angles, um, and I'll also put a link in there for a long bit like this. This is absolutely a fantastic screwdriver. I would not be telling you if I didn't believe so. Uh, okay, enough of that. I'm going to pause and get set up here real quick, and then we'll get busy. All right, so one of the first things that I like to do before I even start pulling this thing apart is I open up the uh, fuser kit and I get all my items out. Now, this is your heat sleeve. Um, you want to leave the paper on it. And there's some oil that goes down into this. And they, you know, everybody, service techs, they all have their different ways of doing this. But I generally like to go ahead and get started with this because this stuff is so thick, it takes a while for it to get all down into the fuser roller. So basically what I do is I just tilt this thing in there like that and then I set it aside and let it be dripping the whole time that, uh, that I'm working on the copy machine. And then that way I don't have to wait so long for... Um, to install this. Uh, there we go. All right, so let's get busy. Um, First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off these side covers. There's gonna be two screws on each side. And you'll see, you can't mess them right there in there. I'm gonna to try to do this fast so that you're not sitting in here looking at a video all day long. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull off this plastic cover and we need to undo this wire. We can, while we're here, we can go ahead and take these two screws out. And this one down here. And it 
it's nice to have a little spring hook if you have one it helps do do the job a little bit faster and now that I got this wire clear I can take out this screw and that screw <laughs> excuse me Now this will come just right out, okay? Now we can take this top plate off because we've already got this wiring done, undone. And you can push these right here if you lift up right there and this whole thing will come off if you want to you don't have to take it off but there's a screw right there a screw right here here and here now be mindful when you take these screws out because there is Two different kinds of screws there okay so just kind of pay attention to where you're pulling pulling those out of now this whole section will come off now this will have some toner build up on it and you just want to take your fingernail and scrape along there careful not to damage that mylar um, because we don't we want to want to keep that from getting torn because uh, it's got a coating on it you could uh, that keeps the paper going right on through okay now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this plug That's going to allow us to get this undone. Right here, we're going to pull this plug out from right there. All this wiring is going to come out, but we need that separated from this, separated from this. So there'll be a screw right there. And that will be for the heat lamp and now we can take that away and then this just goes in and around just be mindful of how you pull this apart bracket off there's going to be a screw there there and then there's going to be one up in there right there okay. then this piece is going to come off Keep it in the frame there so that you can see what I'm doing. Now we can lift up. I generally grab hold of this black piece right here, and then this whole thing will come right out. This is your heat sleeve, and then we've got one other thing to do to get your upper fuser, I mean your pressure roller out, we need to take this bracket off right here and there'll be a screw down here at the bottom. And then there'll be one here. Okay. Now when we go to put this back on, I like to put a little bit of grease on here. Um, 
we do have, Toshiba does have a certain type of grease that they like to use. I'll see if I can't leave a link for that. Um, it's a lithium grease, I do believe. And then this will angle out. Now, we will, I think we will need, yes, we will need this gear. And that's it. The bearings go and the new one will have new new bearings on it. So I like to go ahead and get this out of the way and get the new bearing, I mean the new, uh, get the gear back on there. So that I don't forget when I go installing all this stuff. Okay, so now that's ready. Um, so there you have it. That's it pulled apart. Now we need to replace this heat sleeve. Now, the whole time that I've been doing this, um, over here, that direction, I've been doing this number right here, pouring the fuser oil down in there and getting out uh, as much of it as I can down into the center of this and right now I don't think the camera can see it's only gone down about this far so I'll just stand it right side up like that for a little while and it will slowly, and just check on it, slowly drain down. Now we got some felt, and you'll get some new ones right here. And you'll just want to take notice of how they came off. Um, this one goes on there like that. And when we pull this out, this little wire will go through there and there's a black cap right there and this comes right off. There is a bearing on the inside of this heat sleeve that has to be pulled out. There you go. And then this can be chucked. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we need to replace this pad and that and this one is in fantastic shape it's almost a crime for me to replace it but needed to make a video all right we're one third of the way down there so we will need a slightly smaller screwdriver because I think these are number ones, not number twos. Um, if you use a number two, you could strip, strip these, which is not good.
reason I do not remember it being that difficult. That may be because I just took out one too many. here huh? getting close <clears throat> don't know why but that just did not look right when that thing came out I think it's just because I haven't done this in a couple of months. I got people. My young guns. They do this like I used to. Five days a week. I don't do that anymore. It's one of the perks of owning the business. I think it may be, I'm just so used to, I think the 15 is just a little bit different and I just haven't done one of these 05s in a while. But I'm sure some of these Toshiba techs are gonna be laughing at me. Why did he do it that way? Now, speaking of, you know, why did he do it that way? Some techs, they just pour it right on this felt, this old one that came out. 
they'll just pour it right on there and then they'll slide everything on. Alright, so we'll get that up in there. see a hole until you pry apart. Okay, she's all the way down with the oil. Then we have to take this off and Look at the direction when you pull this off so that you can get it back on the right way. Now I try to get this wire right here, try to get it somewhat straight, makes it easier for everything to go up in there. Don't forget your bearing. And when you slide this up, be careful not to do what I just did right there. Goodness gracious, what a mess. Do not bend. I'm glad this actually did because now you can see what not to do. This is your thermal sensor and this rides up on the inside of this heat sleeve. And if it doesn't make good contact, on that heat sleeve, you are going to get an SC code, or not an SC code, I'm thinking RICO. You're going to get a code, an error code on this for a fuser problem. And so it was kind of good that I did that, I guess. She gets up in there. You have to fish the wire out, and that's where this little handy spring hook comes in handy. Okay. And then we'll put our little black piece on here. and fish them back through there.
set this aside. We're going to get our lower pressure roller in first. Okay, once we get them into these grooves right there then we're going to lock it in place sort of okay now we're ready to put a heat sleeve in and once again, I will straighten this up, this blue one right here a little bit because it's gonna to have to go through a little slot right there. And I use my this, this black piece right here to hold it up while I'm trying to get it in there. Okay. And then we'll get it in there just like that. Okay. Now, once I've got that side in there, I'll go ahead and put the right side bracket back on. Um, and so we'll have to do the same thing. That wire will go through there. And then we'll get that positioned. Put our two screws back in. Three, excuse me. One down there. One up underneath this slot. Now, I'm going to show you something. When we put this thing in, this little black gear right here can cover up. So you'll have to turn it so that you can get at that hole. All right, so you can go ahead and pull the paper right now if you want. Just be careful not to, to damage it. Basically, you want to keep your hands off of it. this back down through here So you'll notice two little notches on there. So this plug will only go back in the way it's supposed to. All right. And then all of this wiring right here, you need to get it into that clip right there. So, and then there's another one right there on the side wall. It's very important. We don't want that wire getting hung up, um, getting paper hung up on it. Just like that.
we'll still need to fish these wires into this blue section right here. There we go. Then this will come up to, through that blue one right there. And then we still have the two black ones come up through here. connector two terminals right here and now this one will have a washer oh. and I think that was gonna work let me get it down here you see where I'm talking about top plate back on. See why I like a screwdriver. It's also why I don't have a forearm like Popeye like I used to. Washers on it. All right. There's that, and then we got these. Again, yeah, we've got screws with washers on them. bracket right here. I'm going to pause a second. All right, I think Toshiba calls for, I don't know if they call for a Molly Coat HP 300. I have not been using that. I've been um, using the Molly Coat EM30L, 
this stuff is crazy expensive. Um, and besides, uh, this is way cheaper and it's recommended by them as well. Put a little bit on that shaft and just spread a little bit. gear there. There we go. We're at the home stretch. Now, you've got these fuser claws, and pull that screw. That one, I don't even think that one. And then there's a little bit of a hook. And then this pops. Now these things have these tiny, tiny little springs on them that you can barely even feel. Um, make sure that I'm in the picture here. While you're doing this, you want to take special care to not knock off this spring right here. This is your exit. Let's it know that the paper has exit, exited the fuser section. 
and it's got a little spring right there that makes it spring loaded. So you want to be careful there. Also don't want to tighten those two particular screws down because they go into plastic and you can strip them out. All right. um, when you put this in, sometimes there'll be some toner buildup on this guide right here. If there is, uh, go ahead. You can, you can actually use acetone or lacquer thinner. Um, either one works just fine. Just believe it or not, it does not melt the plastic unless you leave it on there too long. But um, I've had no issues with that. Uh, this machine, um, like I say, it was almost a crime to replace this stuff, but um, you know, it could stand. It could have stand to be replaced. Um, so there was no need to clean any of that right there. Hang tight with me because even after I get this done, we're going to want to reset the count so that we know how many copies are on this fuser. And that's some valuable information uh, for the service tech. All right. There she is. All right, I'm going to pause and we're going to pop her in and then I'm going to show you how to reset the count. All right, so we're going to put her back in. I'm going to see if I can do this with one hand. Man. Um, And you'll know it's in when you see these two handles pop up. Okay. All right. So once we got the machine all booted up and uh, service in progress is, is gone, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the service mode. So we'll go user tools, or I keep saying that for Rico, user functions. And then we're going to go up here to this gear set and we're going to hold that down. Then you'll hear it beep. Let's try this again. Oh, she's locked up. All right, so there she goes. Took a second. All right, so what we're gonna put in is we're gonna put in pound 10, 48, pound. And then we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna go into PM support mode. And then we're gonna hit next.
this thing is awfully slow. I'm going to pause. Oh, there we go. All right. So now we'll just come over here to the right and we're going to page down until we see fuser. Now there's one thing that we can do is we can just go ahead and hit reset and it'll reset everything in the fuser. But I'm going to go ahead and show you subunit after we hit that and it shows you belt, roller, finger, pad, sheet. Um, and you can do each one of those individually, but uh, you may as well, if you're going to do what we just did, you can just highlight fuser and hit reset and then hit initialize. And then we'll go get out of that FS menu and then we'll go to normal. And there we go. We are all done. Now, if you like that video, please like it and please subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to keep on uh, trying to come up with uh, videos for Toshiba and Rico. And uh, now some brothers I'm going to be start doing too. So uh, stay tuned.